Welcome back everyone to another brand new video today and today's video is going to be extremely important and useful for those of you who are just starting out with Google Ads, who are unfamiliar with the platform and need a bit of guidance, but also very useful for people who are struggling to see results with Google Ads. And this is mainly aimed towards those with e-commerce businesses, whether that be on Shopify, WooCommerce, Wix or any other platform, this is the video for you. I'm going to be showing you how I create profitable brand search campaigns campaigns, profitable search campaigns, as well as profitable shopping and performance max campaigns, all in one single video. So get your notebooks out or follow along step by step. This is going to be very helpful for you. Now, just before we do begin, if you would prefer a team of experts to manage and scale your Google Ads for you, I will leave a link to my Google Ads agency ad rule down below in the description. Now, before we jump into building the first campaign, there are two fundamentals that I really want to mention here that are must-haves and things you must do before you even spend a penny on Google Ads. Number one, that is Google Ads conversion tracking. It's quite self-explanatory, but for those who don't know what it is, it's essentially some code or a plugin you put into your website that syncs your conversion data with Google. So when someone clicks on your Google Ad and purchases from your website, Google can then track this purchase and attribute that to the relevant campaign from where that visitor came from. This is incredibly important for building data within the ad account. It is incredibly important to optimize your campaigns and for Google to actually learn and understand who your ideal customer is. Without this, you are gonna have absolutely no chance of getting anywhere with Google Ads. You might be wondering how on earth do I set conversion tracking up? It can be quite complex. There are a few different ways to do it. Personally, I hired a developer off Fiverr. He has helped my businesses, he's helped my clients, and he's also helped many people from my audience integrate and implement Google Ads conversion tracking. It's very cheap, it's definitely worth doing before you spend a penny on ads. So I'll leave a link to his Fiverr page down below in the description. Please make sure you get this set up before you run Google Ads. And the other thing I wanna mention is payments. Now, a lot of people will set up a Google Ad account and just put one debit or one credit card as their payment method on the account. And it's not uncommon for your first payment on Google to decline because it's obviously a new payment, your bank or card issuer may decline it. And with this, Google will pause your campaigns. It can potentially result in a ad account suspension, which obviously is not what you want. And that will almost put your account on a bit of a red flag list which if it happened again down the line another payment fail could completely get you banned from google for good so ideally you want two or three debit slash credit cards on there as well as a paypal account so you can completely avoid getting any failed payments and ensure your ads and your campaigns are running as smooth as possible now the first type of campaign we're going to be looking at today is brand search this is incredibly important to bring people to your website that are already familiar with your brand you might be running tiktok ads you might be running facebook ads and quite Quite often people will then go to Google and search your brand name on there and you want to be making sure you're appearing at the top of that list when people are Googling your brand name because otherwise as your brand grows your competition are slowly going to start bidding on your brand name and essentially stealing your traffic and customers which is obviously not what we want so to do this you want to click create campaign and at new campaign now as this is leaning towards e-commerce businesses we obviously want to be focusing on sales here obviously again conversion tracking extremely important Important. Once it's set up, you'll be able to have this here and it will say purchases. Now campaign type, obviously here we want search as well. Then in the website visits box here, you wanna put your website name. For this video, we're gonna use Gymshark as the example website. Very familiar, a lot of people know it. And then you wanna name your campaign. We will just obviously call this brand search campaign. Then hit continue. Now the first thing you're greeted with here is bidding strategy. A lot of people sort of overthink this. Yes, it is incredibly important. Not so important for this type of campaign because you'll honestly only be spending about five to ten dollars a day on this campaign even myself with one of my businesses we're getting about eight thousand visitors to the website a day i still only spend 20 pounds a day on a brand search campaign so you really don't need to set this up with a huge budget there's, it, there's absolutely no need um so for this there's no need for maximized clicks because we're not going out for new cold traffic i would just leave this as max conversions or max conversion value personally i do prefer conversion value but each to their own, that's just what I prefer. Now, again, customer acquisition, we don't wanna be ticking this. We're not necessarily after new customers. Brand search campaigns are also a great way to bring back existing customers to your business. So there is no need to tick this box right here. Now, moving on from this, there are some more campaign settings about where your ads can display. Now, I personally like to remove the display network. I just find that the traffic, yes, is cheaper. You might get a lot of traffic from it, but it's usually very poor quality and leads to little to no conversions. So you wanna be focused 
focusing on the Google obviously search as well as the Google search network. Make sure you're selecting the correct country, in this case, the United Kingdom, as well as the relevant language that you're advertising in. Audience segments, not something you need to use here. Broad match keyword types, you wanna be using keyword match types here because we are gonna be using exact match keyword types and I'll explain a little bit more in a minute about what they are. Essentially, broad match keyword types will allow Google to go above and beyond the keywords you give them. But obviously, this is a brand search campaign. We only wanna be showing these ads to people that are Googling exactly your brand name. So there's no need for broad matches here. And obviously here, you can schedule your campaign, but there's really no need to overcomplicate it and do that. Now, next up is making your ad as well as putting in your keywords. Now, ad group one, we are just gonna call this brand search because that's what it is. It's pretty straightforward. Now, once you click the keyword tab here, often Google is gonna ask for intervention with their AI systems. Now, you don't need to do that here. You wanna create this yourself. They'll often as well give you examples of keywords, but I'll cut back in a minute I will put some keywords down and these are the sort of themes and keywords you want to be using in a brand search campaign. Now here are a few examples of keywords you want to be using for a brand search campaign, all of which you can see start or at least include the brand name. Obviously Gymshark is the example here. And then you just want to follow this with other relevant terms, things such as discount code, review, coupon code, shipping time, customer support, contact. You can even have um, returns policy on here. Anything that's related to sort of placing an order on the website website is, is really, really worth putting here. But obviously, as it stands, these keywords are currently set as broad match. Now, the way you make these keywords is an exact match keyword, which essentially means the ad will only appear if people are searching for these exact terms. There is a bit of leeway now with exact match. It's not actually 100% exact match anymore, but more or less, it will mean that these ads only appear when people search these exact terms. So what you want to do, you want to copy your keyword. You want to head over to a website called Ads Wrapper. Uh, let's just get rid of these. And once you paste your keywords here, click wrap keywords and it will wrap these keywords in a variety of match types for you. And obviously what we want here is all of the exact match, which is right at the bottom, click copy, and then you wanna copy and then paste them in here. And you can see there are now brackets either side of each keyword. And that means they are exact match keywords, which for a brand search campaign is extremely important. Now, once you've done this, you can simply scroll down and you'll be able to make your ad. I do typically only use one ad for brand search because again, it's very low budget. There's no need to split test things. This will be the campaign in your ad account that gets the best cost per conversion, the best return on ad spend, but obviously it's not really scalable because of the nature of it. So if we just quickly make a mock-up ad here and you'll see exactly sort of different things you want to be included in a brand search campaign. Now, usually I do just direct the visitor to the home page, but if you want to direct them to a product page or a collection page, that's absolutely fine. For example, if you wanted to direct people to a leggings collection, you could just put your URL path as this, for example. So at least people can then see here what, you know, whereabouts they're gonna be landing on your website. So we'll leave it at that for now. You can then enter up to 15 headlines. If you're struggling, Google will give some recommendations here and you can click more ideas. And again, you can simply just click these or at least copy and paste these, should I say. Yes, there's 15 options. You don't have to do all 15 for brand search. Other types of campaigns, I do usually recommend 15, but for brand search I would say at least seven or eight is absolutely fine so you can add things like Gymshark summer sale if you've got a summer sale on if you offer free returns you could say free uh, 30 day returns, for example. If you offer good quality customer support, you might offer 24 seven customer support you can put in there. If you offer, you know, next day delivery, or, you know, if you offer free shipping over a certain threshold, these are the sort of, these are the sort of things you're gonna want to include in your headlines. Now, moving on to descriptions, you can see you can enter up to four. These aren't as important as headlines because it's the thing below them. The first thing people are gonna see is the bold headlines, but some people might read these, so it's good to still use some useful information here that. You you can essentially expand upon the headlines you've already provided. You can see Google's actually auto-filled a couple here already, but again, this is a good opportunity to show people some offers your business may have. So again, for example, free next day delivery on orders over 75 pounds, whatever it might be. And then you could say free 30 day returns. They might offer a student discount as well. Anything that you think the buyer could potentially be interested in that could help push them over the line to potentially purchase is what you wanna be including in your description. Images, a lot of people overlook this as well because they think, oh, it's a search campaign. It's just text, there's no need for images. But more and more often now, Google is gonna be showing your search campaign with images. Now here is an example. It's not an actual Google ad. You can see a Google ad is here for Gymshark 
shark but an example of an image showing next to a search result on google this is what it's going to look like if you start to include images in your search campaign so i would definitely be including as many images in here as possible because it will help you stand out from the competition it will help you stand out from the standard search results as well the next option business name and logo very straightforward you should be able to enter that with no issues site links is something i think is really important as well going back to the google search results here is an example of three site links on this search ad so instead of just having one clickable option on your ad you can you can add up to four what google calls site links and this is a great opportunity to add extra links to different collections and this again now obviously gymshark offers gym wear for men and women so they've put men's gym tops here women's leggings and then new releases and all you need to do is just type the headline here you can type a little description again about what this site link is and where it's going to take the customer and then you would just enter the link directly to each specific collection so if you are a business that offers different categories this is something you definitely want to utilize in your brand search campaign i prefer to use site links over call outs and if you wanted to you can add some extra things such as prices if you offer high ticket prices it's something that you can add that could be useful if you're lead gen or if, again if you're selling high ticket items that often require you know over the phone support or sales calls you can add your phone number directly to this ad and people can call you directly from this ad now once you've done all that you can click done and then your ad will be ready to go you can click next then you'll set your daily budget again it's brand search five pound a day is perfectly fine to start with and then once you hit next the campaign will check for errors and then you'll click publish up here and that is your brand search campaign done not too complicated can be done in about 10 minutes and it's a campaign that literally requires zero management once you launch it but it is incredibly vital for the success of your google ad account because like i said it's going to be getting the cheapest cost per purchase best return on ad spend and that conversion data is going to build the health of the account it's going to feed into other campaigns and help optimize them as well so if you don't have a brand search campaign you're essentially just going to be slowing down the progress of your ad account so get this done and let's move on to normal search campaigns which is essentially cold outreach to bring in new customers that aren't aware of your business and turn them into paying customers now a great example of one of these types of search campaigns is you can see here i've just searched from google women's leggings high-waisted and the top search ad like i said earlier has an image and it stands out really nicely now this is a great campaign because you can see it's got the brand name in bold here and a good selling point of these leggings which is non-see-through leggings this is going to attract people to this ad it's going to make people click so it's a great chance to display an issue your product fixes for example and again it would be a good idea to place perhaps an offer in the description or the headline as well to entice people even more to click on the ad so if we jump back to google we want sales again for this because obviously we're trying to get conversions we're trying to get orders on our stores you want to make sure your conversion goal is obviously the purchase goal click search again and again we want to do gymshark as the example website click continue we could do cold search now again, a lot of you might be tempted with the bid strategy to start with target ROAS. If you've got no conversion data at all, Google actually won't let you do this. For me personally, again, I use conversion value as the bid strategy. As I start to get that conversion data, if I wanna be a bit more cautious and sort of ensure profitability once I've got that conversion data, I would then turn on target ROAS. But to begin with, I would just recommend not having this on. And again, I personally haven't seen much difference between having this ticked and unticked. So I just leave it unticked again. I'm I'm not trying to overcomplicate things here. And again, similar to brand search, I turn off the display network. This campaign is essentially very similar to making a brand search campaign, but instead of plastering your brand name everywhere, you can start to add more offers, you know, more problem solving pieces of text to your ads and things like that to, like I said, bring people to your business that have no idea about your business. And you know, enticing them in and hopefully converting them into paying customers now obviously uk you want english here and again we want to be using keyword match types because i'll explain in a minute about which other match types you could be using here now in this particular campaign you're not just going to have one ad group if you're like gymshark and you've got different product categories i would have a different product category per ad group so for example here we would have an ad group for leggings we would have an ad group for men's trousers a separate one for men's t-shirts you get the idea that sort of thing so we're just going to make one here and call it leggings we want to create the ad ourselves and gymshark and google you can see here has already populated some example keywords now now if you're struggling to find certain keywords or if you're struggling to find any keywords should i say to use in a search campaign i would 100 be using google's tool called the keyword planner it's a great way to see the search volume for keywords and as well as different related terms if we just put leggings in here make sure you've got the country selected correctly you can see for example average monthly search volume for leggings in the uk is 
this 50K. And it's also gonna give you a ton of other search terms related to this. So what you wanna do here is go down the list. You can filter it to, from high to low. You wanna be including every relevant search term in this list here that is related to your product. So I would be putting things like flare leggings. I'd be putting gym leggings in here. Again, gym shark leggings. You could put yoga pants in here, but you get the idea. You can go down the keyword planner. You can put in as many as you want. I would say at least 20. You don't need hundreds in here. 20 to 30 is probably a good way to start. So let's pretend that there is about 20 keywords in here. Currently as it stands, as you'll know from the previous campaign we made, these are currently on broad match, which in search is absolutely fine. If you've got a decent budget, I would actually recommend using broad match keyword types. Google is incredibly good and clever now at still finding the correct customers for your business. And having broad match keyword types is essentially giving Google the reins to tell them, use these keywords, you know, we trust you to find the right customers for us. If you've got a slightly limited budget, perhaps less than 50 pound a day, I would be using phrase match keyword types and a phrase match keyword type looks like this. Again, very self-explanatory. It's gonna, it's not quite broad. It's not quite exact. It's somewhere in the middle. So if anyone's searching for a phrase similar to what you're providing here, it's gonna appear. Now, like I said, 50 pound or $50 a day less, I would use phrase match. If you can afford to spend $50 or 50 pounds a day plus on this search campaign, I would be using broad match types. Now, moving on to the ad, like I said, you're gonna want to be making a variety of ad groups here for different product categories. So instead of having your homepage as the final URL, I would be putting your collection page here. So again, this is just an example. If we're doing the leggings collection, you wanna put the leggings URL here. And again, in the display path, you wanna be putting something relevant so people know where they're gonna end up on your website. And again, very similar to brand search, but instead of having so many headlines here with your brand name, you're gonna to wanna to include more offers, more eye-catching, you know, things about the product. You know, the example we looked at a minute ago with the non-see-through leggings is something really good to put on an ad like this. So any problems your product would solve, I would put in your headlines. If you offer good returns policy, good customer support, if you've got a sale on, if you've got new releases, if you've got a discount code, actually putting a discount code in a headline that people can then enter at checkout is an incredibly good way to get more conversions from a search campaign. So it would look something like this. Sometimes Google's a bit funny about capitalization. So you can even just put it in lowercase, but you get the idea. If you put a discount code as a headline, it's a great way for people to already think about when they're gonna be in your checkout and placing an order. And again, if you're struggling for headline ideas, Google will provide some, you can click more ideas here. But another, again, very good way of getting ideas is just searching the products that you're selling on Google and seeing what other things people are doing. You can see I've just searched yoga leggings here. This isn't the best example of a search ad because they've got 70% here and then 50% here. So that could be quite confusing. But again, if you refresh, it's gonna give you more and more examples. And this is the particular campaign I would be maxing out 15 out of 15 headlines. It is the campaign I'd be maxing out four out of four descriptions. Again, max out as many images as possible. You're gonna to want to be standing out because you can see a lot of the organic results here have images. If your paid ads here don't have any images, then you're less prevalent to organic search results. So if you can get images here, it's gonna help massively. So use as many images as you can. Site links, again, are very important. If you've got different types of leggings, you could use these site links, again, as different subcategories. You could have yoga pants, you could have high-waisted leggings, you could have black leggings, blue leggings, or anything like that as a subcategory of the category you're already promoting. And again, this is pretty much the same as brand search. You know, you can add your phone number, different prices. If you've got a promo on, you can add this as well. And once you've built this ad group out, click done, and then you can move on to the next step, which will be setting your budget. Like I said, if you're going for the broad match keyword types, I'd set this at least 50 pounds a day. Ideally, 100 pounds a day will, it will just help. It will help get things going quicker. But if you're a bit limited and you're doing sub 50 pound budget, then definitely be using that phrase match keyword type. So for this example, we are just gonna set this at 100 pounds a day. And then once you're ready, you can click publish campaign here. And once published, you'll get a little alert like this and it will say a policy review. This doesn't usually take two days. It usually takes an hour or two. Not something I really pay attention to. I just read the data myself rather than letting this thing go step by step. It's quite irrelevant personally. But obviously, if you're gonna want to build out more ad groups, you know, what we've just done there, we've created the one ad group, which obviously for this example was leggings. If you wanna do a men's gym wear ad group, all you need to do is click campaigns here add groups and then just click the plus button here and it will allow you to go through the keyword match types again as well as building out another ad again very straightforward you know we can just call this one men's gym where you'd enter your keyword match types here again if you're using phrase match remember to put
put the asterisk there as well. Google really does like to push the broad match on you, but please do be using phrase match if you've got a limited budget. Save and continue, and then it will just allow you to go through the ad creation process again, and you can keep repeating that until you're satisfied with how many ad groups you've got. Okay, now the next campaign type that is essential for success with Google Ads if you're an e-commerce business is gonna be a standard shopping campaign. Now for this, you're gonna to want to have an active Google Merchant Center account with your products already active and approved in there. Yes, there's a lot of issues with Merchant Center and new accounts being suspended and banned. Unfortunately, there's simply no workaround of that. So fingers crossed if you've got to this point in the video, you already do have an active slash approved Merchant Center account. So assuming you've got all that done and your Merchant Center's linked to your Google Ads account, you wanna again go to the campaign creation screen, hit sales again, ensure your purchase conversion tracking is linked to the campaign. We don't want performance max here, we want shopping. You wanna then select your Merchant Center here. It's gonna prompt you to make a performance max campaign again. We do not want that. We want the standard shopping campaign and then you can hit continue here. Campaign name, I like to just call this standard shopping. Additional settings, again, aren't really important here. I just ignore those. Now for standard shopping, there are three bid strategies. We've got target ROAS, maximize clicks and manual CPC. Target ROAS is very good for scaling profitably, but if you're a new account slash if you're an account with very little conversion data, you're not actually gonna be able to use this. So if you are at a point and you've already had quite you know good success with shopping then I do recommend target ROAS for standard shopping but let's focus on maximize clicks or manual CPC now I've tried both recently back in the day as in four years ago manual CPC worked really well for me on standard shopping but now it really is quite a challenge I'm not sure why so the way I would go to get this off the ground is a maximize clicks with a max CPC bid limit of anywhere of around half a dollar or half a pound just to begin with budget whatever you're comfortable with in this situation I always like to say at least 100 a day, but even if you've got 30 pounds or 30 dollars a day to work with, that is absolutely fine. Campaign priority, you don't need to worry about this. This is only if you're running multiple standard shopping campaigns with the same product in different campaigns. If one campaign has high priority, obviously you guessed it, it is gonna take priority over another campaign with low priority. So we don't need to worry about that. Like the search campaigns, I like to leave this tick and devices, we wanna be just showing them on all devices. Again, selecting your country, make sure you do that correctly now now when you're starting out I do just like to have all products in one ad group so we don't need to segment this too much and over complicate things and it is easy as that once you click that blue button at the bottom your shopping campaign is ready to go now one thing you do want to do is click the plus button next to the all product section filter this by item ID you can tick this box here and that is then going to select all the products in your merchant center you can click continue to edit bids all of the bids are going to be automatic because we're not using a manual CPC bid strategy and then you can hit save and you can see here all your products are going to be here the only one you want to turn off is everything else and that is because as you start to spend money you are going to start turning off and excluding products and if this is still active if you exclude a product it is still going to show if this is active so we want to make sure that everything else in all products is turned off and a great way to analyze your data here is simply click in the products tab you can select your time frame up here and you can filter again by clicks cost you can add your own columns here such as conversions cost per conversion your conversion rate and eventually as you start to spend more you'll see products with very high cost per purchase or very high spend with no conversions and then you can simply go back over to your ad group here click the ad group button find the product you want to turn off and simply click exclude for example so it's very simple to do that's one of the main things you want to be doing with the standard shopping campaign to keep optimizing it, it does take a bit of time I personally if I've got a standard shopping campaign running usually only check it about one every week so it's not necessarily a daily activity and I guess the only other real main thing you want to be keeping an eye on is under the insights and reports tab if you click search terms and this is going to be showing you a whole list of terms that your products are shown for you'll find at some point a search term may have a hundred to three hundred clicks with no conversion at that point you're probably going to want to exclude that search term and add it to a negative keyword list but I mean other than that it's really quite straightforward of a standard shopping campaign and please if you've got any questions about 
about what I'm doing here, please leave a comment down below and I'll be sure to reply to as many as possible. So just to quickly summarize here, what we've done so far, we've done a brand search campaign, which is extremely low budget and is there to bring people to your website that are already searching for your brand. We've got a cold traffic search campaign, which is gonna be to attract people that are Googling for certain products and trying to bring them to your website and turn them into paying customers. And what we've just done here is obviously the standard shopping campaign, which just to sort of visually show you if you're unfamiliar, this is what a shopping ad looks like. When people search for products on Google, you'll have all these product listings here. And when you run shopping ads, this is what is gonna be shown up here. Now, one thing that is really important with shopping campaigns is to ensure Google has enough data about your product to make sure it's gonna be shown for the correct relevant search terms. A great example of this, if you've submitted your product feed to your merchant center, it may only be bringing in the Shopify title of your product. So again, using leggings as an example, if you're selling just black leggings, that might be the title in Merchant Center. That is an incredibly useless title for Google to do anything with. So when you're in your Merchant Center, you can go into each product, you can edit the product. And in this section here where it says title, you are gonna to want to ram in as many keywords related to the product as possible. So instead of it just being black leggings, you are gonna to want to have as many relevant terms as possible, such as yoga pants, high-waisted leggings, non-see-through leggings, anything that's related to the product, you can put in the title and this is going to help increase the reach of your products. By ignoring this and not doing this, you'll probably find your products will either appear for incredibly irrelevant search terms or they simply won't get any impressions at all. Okay, now moving on to the final campaign type of this video and that is going to be a performance max campaign. Again, sales, make sure your conversion setting is selected there and then you want to click performance max here and make sure you select the right merchant center account. Now for those who aren't quite sure what a Pmax campaign is, is essentially an all in one campaign that shows your ads on shopping, search, Gmail, display, YouTube, discover, any platform that Google shows ads on a performance max campaign can potentially reach for you. Now I'm going to quickly go through how I structure a performance max campaign. I'm going to try and do this in the simplest and most understandable way possible, only because Pmax campaigns can get quite complex. So keeping it simple, bidding strategy again, I like conversion value. Again, once I've got the conversion data, I do run performance max campaigns with a target ROAS. And I just wanna say actually, if you are on a fairly limited budget, I would just stick with the three campaign types I've done before this. So brand search, search, and standard shopping. I would only start to venture into performance max once your ads are profitable and once you've got a good budget to play around with but I thought I'd cover it in this video anyway because I'm sure there are at least a couple of you who would find this useful. So hit next, ensure you've got the right country selected, ensure you've got the right language selected, hit next again, and this is gonna be your asset generation. Now this is what the AI screen looks like. We don't need Google's help here and we can click skip. Now asset group one, I always do a what is called a feed only asset group. And what this essentially is, is where you simply just attach your merchant center product feed and your products to this asset group. I just then have a final URL and then literally all you then need to do is is don't fill any of this out and just have your product feed as this asset group. So what this essentially does is just ensures this asset group is only gonna be showing shopping ads within the Performance Max campaign. Now I rarely segment the products here. I used to segment Pmax campaigns heavily, but it just got very overcomplicated and there's simply no need for it because if you overcomplicate things, it's gonna take Google a longer time to learn. It's gonna make it harder for you to read any data. So I would stick to a feed only asset group. Hit next at the bottom, select your daily budget, Pmax, I would say bare minimum £100 a day. Ideally, you probably want £200 a day. Now, I just want to clarify with some Google Ads accounts for this one as an example here, comparing this with my other businesses, I can simply create a feed only asset group with no assets here. But you can see I've just tried to create the campaign with no assets, but it's still asking me for headlines here. If that's the case, please don't worry. Just provide everything that Google is asking for, or should I say provide the bare minimum. So they want here at least three headlines. Make sure you just provide three. They want here one long headline. They want at least one description here. They want at least one landscape and one square image. Obviously your business name here. And then that's simply it. So moving forward,
forward. It seems Google isn't quite too keen on people running feed only, but just providing the bare minimum will still help your feed only asset group show just on the shopping network. So once you've done this and created the campaign, I would then simply go back into the asset group section. I would make sure to create one more asset group and that simply be a fully built asset group. Now, what this is, is very straightforward. You're gonna to wanna to have the final URL. You're gonna to wanna to have 15 headlines. You wanna basically max out this asset group with as many assets as physically possible. Again, five out of five long headlines, five out of five descriptions. Make sure you're using all 20 images. You only need one logo though. Please don't think you need 20 different logos. One logo is fine. Business name is a must. Videos actually isn't 100% necessary. Personally, if you've got videos, great, provide them. I don't always provide them here, but everything else I make sure I have provided to the maximum. And that includes site links as well. And again, if you've got them, make sure you're using promotions, prices, you know, call outs and things like that. And the final area of the asset group is going to be the signals. Now, this is again, another area you want to going to completely max out in the search themes here. You can add up to 25 search terms that are relevant to your products. So if you are a gym brand, you want to be ramming 25 search terms here that are related to gym products. Again, this is going to give Google a good starting point and sort of good direction to go with your campaign. It just helps steer Google into the right direction to ensure it is going to do its best job to essentially find the right target audience for you. If you've got any data, you can click this box here and you'll be able to select things that Google is already tracking for you, such as all visitors, all converters. You can even select things like past buyers, product viewers, you know, shopping cart abandoners, even people who have abandoned shopping cart. You want to make sure all of these things are in here. As much data as possible, the more data you give Google here, the better chance it is to succeed. You can even go down to the interest and demographic section here. And again, you can even, you know, it's already doing it for us. You can tick as many relevant in-market audiences here, you know, running clothes, you've got sports and fitness, again, yoga, clothing, you get the idea. You wanna be doing as many of these things as possible. One thing I wouldn't necessarily touch is the demographic section. I like to leave that completely broad and you can see that is recommended as well. And if you wanna save this audience for later or another campaign down the line, you can simply name the audience here. You wanna make sure that's saved and make sure that second asset group is created. And that is gonna be your created and complete performance max campaign with one feed only asset group and one fully built asset group with a very stacked audience signal. So I hope you have found this step-by-step -step video useful. I've covered four different campaign types here. If you've got any questions, just leave a comment down below. If you need expert help with Google Ads, I'll leave a link to my Google Ads agency below. And like I said at the start, if you need help implementing Google conversion tracking, which is a must, make sure you go and contact my developer on Fiverr and he will get that all set up for you. But other than that, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.